prophet David and the accusation of adultery. The Bible relates a story about David in which he is accused of committing some very serious sins. From the roof he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. She, Bathsheba, came to him, and he slept with her. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David, saying, I am pregnant. Bathsheba was married, and so when David found out she was pregnant with his child, instead of taking responsibility and publicly confessing his sins, he instead compounds his sins by having her husband killed. Perhaps even more strangely, God allegedly struck the child that was born from the adulterous relationship with a lethal illness. But because by doing this you have shown utter contempt for the Lord, the son born to you will die. This contradicts a basic principle of justice laid out in the Bible. Parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. So according to Old Testament law, it was David and Bathsheba that both deserved death for their sins, not their innocent child. Such stories don't just reflect badly on David, they also portray God as being unjust. The Qur'an relates a similar story about David, however, unlike the Bible, he does not commit the sins of adultery and murder. Rather, he makes a mistake when judging a dispute between two parties and immediately repents. Then David realized that we had been testing him, so he asked his Lord for forgiveness, fell down on his knees, and repented. We forgave him, i.e. for his misdeed. His reward will be nearness to us, a good place to return to. The Qur'an not only rejects the accusation of adultery and murder, but it also portrays David in a noble light as someone who takes responsibility and seeks God's forgiveness for the smallest of mistakes. Prophet Noah and the Accusation of Drunkenness The Bible tells us that after the Great Flood, one of the first things Noah did was to plant a vineyard and fall into a state of naked drunkenness. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard when he drank some of its wine, he became drunk, and they uncovered inside his tent. It is difficult to believe that this great prophet, who had the self-discipline to build a giant ark by hand, would then lose all self-control as soon as he sets foot off the ark. The Bible goes on to tell us that Noah cursed his own grandchildren when he found out that his youngest son, Ham, had informed his siblings about Noah's sorry state. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son, Ham had done, he said, Curse be Canaan, the lowest of slaves he will be to his brothers. One can't help questioning Noah's conduct. Even if cursing was justified, wouldn't it make more sense for Noah to curse Ham rather than Ham's son Canaan, who was an innocent party? The Quran paints a very different picture of Noah. After the water subsided, Noah inquires about the well-being of his rebellious son who refused to board the ark. It sailed with them on waves like mountains, and Noah called out to his son, who stayed behind, Come aboard with us, my son. Do not stay with the disbelievers. The waves cut them off from each other, and he was among the drowned. Noah called out to his Lord, saying, My Lord, my son was one of my family, though your promise is true, and you are the most just of all judges. Again, notice the stark contrast with the biblical portrayal. Rather than getting into a naked, drunken state and cursing innocent family members, the Quran tells us that Noah, a great prophet and leader of men, but also a father, turned to God with sadness for his dead son. Both the Bible and the Quran define the concept of prophethood in highly noble terms. After examining the stories of the prophets, we've seen that it's only the Quran that portrays the prophets in such a way that satisfies this ideal. By contrast, the Bible shows the prophets in an extremely negative light. It seems that no sin is too great for them to commit. Yet the Bible states, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. What morals can be derived from stories that are filled with prophets committing idolatry, murder, adultery, and blasphemy? The Quran defends God's righteous prophets against the slander and falsehood attributed to them in the Bible. It provides the best guidance for those who want good examples to follow in order to come closer to God and be successful in the hereafter. There is a lesson in the stories of such people for those who understand.